Denver is our featured city of the day. We're going to take a look at its history as well as what it's like to actually live in Denver. And during this, we're going to take the chance to check out its affordability, what the lifestyle is like, as well as real estate, which this in-depth approach is going to allow us to compare Denver to the surrounding Denver metro area. So if you've been thinking of moving to Denver or just want to know more about Denver, then this video is for you because we're covering everything you need to know about Denver, Colorado. Denver is located in the front range of Colorado, north of Colorado Springs, yet south of Fort Collins, but it's further north than most people think. And we have three major highways that encompass Denver for you to get around. I-25 going north to south, I-70 running east to west, and then 225 connecting both of them on the outskirts. Now, if you're looking to go skiing, on average, the map says an hour and 15 minutes, but that's during off-peak times. I would generally give yourself an hour and a half to at least two hours to get to most of the ski resorts off of I-70 in Summit County. And if you're looking for world-class climbing or mountain biking, you want to give yourself about 35 minutes to get to the outskirts more towards Golden. And if you're looking to catch a flight over a DIA, you're going to want to give yourself about 30 to 35 minutes from downtown Denver. And I'm sharing these heavily trafficked areas because at some point or another, if you're looking to move to Denver, it's likely you're going to go skiing, mountain biking, climbing, or catch a flight. But to give you a better sense overall of what the commute time is like in Denver, it's 25 and a half minutes on average. And now that you know where Denver is, my name is Alex Saldana. I'm a local real estate agent and investor. And on this channel, I try to answer all the questions home buyers, homeowners, and investors have about real estate. And I'm on a mission to reach every Denver resident. So if there's someone that you know of that could benefit from this and you'd like to share it with them, we'd greatly appreciate it. Now let's get back to Denver, Colorado, because that's what you came here for. Denver was originally founded in 1858 as a gold mining town. However, the gold quickly dried up and all the miners started moving west into the foothills and the mountains. Denver is one of those cities that people move to for the lifestyle. Every outdoor sport that's imaginable is just within a couple of hours of downtown Denver. And because we value our lifestyle so much, within Denver city limits, there are so many parks, rec centers, and so many things to do. And this has led to a steady growth of population. However, Denver is actually not as big as what most people think, with a population of about 711,000 people, where the larger, broader Denver metro area, which includes cities like Lakewood, Centennial, Aurora, Westminster, that gets close to about 3 million for the Denver metro area. Now to pull in an outside source to look at the data and how Denver ranks, you can see here through niche.com, out of the 12 categories for lifestyle in Denver, we get rated in an A-. But that's just the algorithm. But what are the actual residents current and past saying about Denver? And we can see here with over 1,100 reviews, we're getting four stars. And I can't imagine that too many cities are getting a much higher rating. And now this full report is fairly extensive, so I'm going to link it down below so you can dig through it at your own leisure. Overall, Denver has over 250 parks ranging from hiking trails to biking to pavilions to rec centers and just going back to Denverites appreciating outdoors. Now let's take a look at the school systems because whether or not you have kids, it does affect you. You're going to be paying property taxes for the school system and it does affect resale value. Denver Public Schools contains about 90,000 kids in roughly 328 different schools across the city of Denver. And on average, the teacher to student ratio in Denver Public Schools is 15 to 1, which is pretty good ratio nationwide. And now as an agent, I can't share a whole lot more information about the school systems. However, I'm going to leave a full report that you can click on the link down below to review whenever you'd like. Now, something I can talk about is In-N-Out Burger. And is there an In-N-Out Burger within Denver city limits? And I'm sad to say there is not. Your closest one from downtown Denver takes about 21 minutes to get to. But let's be real, you're not moving to Colorado for In-N-Out Burger. Just go to Santiago's. Now, something that impacts all of us, whether you're a renter or a homeowner, is real estate because it highly impacts your quality of life. So let's take a look from a larger macro point of view on the city of Denver, where we can see that the median home price as of the end of 2022 is 530000 which compared to a year ago is actually flat. But in the last decade, since about 2012, home prices are up more than 150%. So if you've been thinking about buying in Denver and you've been waiting for home prices to go down, your wish has been granted. And now that we know that the median home price in Denver is $530,000, let us compare that 
to the neighbors. The median home price in Aurora is $470,000. In Lakewood, the median home price is $466,000. In Centennial, the median home price is $586,000. All the way up in Boulder, the median price is now $850,000. And in Greenwood Village, $1.2 $1.2 million. So you can see Denver is actually right in the middle of the pack for median home prices around the Denver metro area. But let's go a little bit deeper. What does the median price of $530,000 in Denver get you today? Chances are, by the time you see this video, those homes that you just saw have already sold. But fear not, we're going to have our Denver Preferred Homes list linked down in the description below. And you can also have that sent to your inbox every single day. And now might be a really good time to talk about what the monthly mortgage payment would be for the median price in Denver. And to do this the best, as rates are constantly changing... Down in the description below, once again, I'll have a link for a mortgage calculator. And especially if you're moving in from out of state, it's really worth checking out because our property taxes might be a lot lower than you think, which now leads us into the Denver cost of living. And you can see here that maybe we pay a little bit less for utilities and food. However, our housing transportation, goods and services are definitely above the national averages. But I'd like to think that's because our lifestyle is above the national averages. Now, if you're watching this video at this point and you're thinking, you know, Denver is looking like a pretty good city for me, feel free, reach out, call me, text me, or my contact information will be down below in the description, email, whatever works for you. Now, if you're wondering how long it actually takes to buy a home, watch this video and it's going to walk you through all the steps for the home purchase. 